Welcome back to another movie recap. Today we take a look at a sci-fi drama romance called Never Let Me Go. Spoilers ahead, so watch out and take care. The movie starts with us finding out that a breakthrough in medicine came about in 1952. And by 1967, life expectancy passed 100 years of age. Kathy, our protagonist is standing in a hospital. She's 28 years old and has been a carer of 9 years. She watches on as one of her patients is about to donate their organs. We flash back to school where Kathy, Tommy and Ruth grew up. All the children are singing in assembly. Students are reminded of Hailsham that they are special and are to remain healthy. The children play sports and are kept both fit and healthy. The ball goes out of bounds of the school, but Tommy is too scared to go beyond. A teacher asks why, and the children explain they would come to harm if they did. The children have bracelets on, which they must scan when leaving the school to head into the grounds. Tommy gets picked last and starts to scream in frustration. Kathy approaches Tommy to help him, but in anger and on reflex, he strikes Kathy across the face. The children line up to see a nurse, they see the bruise and question it. They are pleased it is only a bruise. Kathy visits a new teacher who has arrived at the boarding school, Miss Lucy. She is young and wants to know more about the children. Miss Lucy tells Kathy she was trying to calm Tommy down after he was bullied in the schoolyard and not to worry if he wasn't good at sports. Kathy joins Tommy to eat school dinner in the canteen. Tommy apologizes for striking her. The children watch old movies, while Kathy is caught looking at Tommy. While acting, Tommy gets confused. Both Kathy and Miss Lucy help him through his routine, all the while Ruth looks on. A simmering anger and resentment in her eyes. It's late at night and Ruth and Kathy are talking about how Tommy has started to change. Madame Mariclaude arrives at the school. During assembly Miss Emily announces she will be inspecting their artwork and poetry. Miss Emily announces that a sale the following day will take place, which all the children are delighted with. The children have collected tokens to spend, the sale is old, thrown away toys, mostly damaged and of poor quality that no one wants. Miss Lucy finds it heartbreaking. Tommy uses his tokens to buy Kathy a present, a music cassette, which Lucy falls in love with. Ruth looks on again, in anger. Miss Lucy can't take it any longer and decides to tell the children the truth. She tells them that they are not like normal children. They have no family. They won't grow up to do great things, they will grow to an age in which they will become adults but only for a short time as they have been bred to have their organs harvested so others can live. A heartbreaking reality in an alternate timeline. Miss Lucy is then fired. To comfort each other, Tommy and Kathy hold hands. Kathy then finds Ruth talking to Tommy in private before she kisses him. Years have passed and Kathy is packing her belongings into a small case to leave. It's here we find out Ruth and Tommy after all these years are still together. They are now 18, the children are to leave Hailsham to go to different accommodations around the country until they were old enough to start donating their organs. They can live a little until that time. They meet children from other homes. They join others who are about to leave for the completion centers to start being harvested. But now they are allowed to live their lives, at least for a short while. Tommy joins Kathy on a walk in the rain, a glimmer of romance. When back at the cottages, Ruth taunts Kathy that she has no one. Well, she does. After having sex with Ruth, Tommy joins Kathy in the barn while she's looking at magazines she found in the rubbish. Ruth and Kathy start talking. Ruth believes that others from the home have found her original, those which their genes are taken from. In a cafe, our trio try to act normal, but find adjusting to others hard. While in the cafe, they feel as though the normal people are watching them. Rodney and Chrissy discuss how they'd like to be deferred for a few years, allowing them to live longer if they are in love. They soon realize this is a lie and are scared as they are soon to start the process. A sad realization. They find Ruth's original, but unfortunately it wasn't them. Ruth is filled with anger, followed by sadness. Ruth tells everyone how they are modeled on the lowest of the low in society. They head home to the cottages, heartbroken, using their wrist straps to log in that they are back. On another walk, Tommy thinks the gallery might be true and that could be how they can put off their donations. He asks Kathy to tell them they are in love. Tommy admits he couldn't be a carer, but Kathy could be. While Tommy and Ruth are having sex, Kathy has no choice but to listen. She puts on her cassette as Ruth walks in and tells Kathy she knows she loves Tommy but makes it clear that he could never love her and would never leave Ruth. It's then Ruth tries to kiss Kathy. The next day Kathy decides she wants to be a carer and starts the process. Ruth and Tommy do separate, but then it's too late and Kathy has already started her carer training. They all start to go their separate ways. It's now 1994, Kathy is working with her donors. She knows one day it will be her turn to start donating, but not yet. She visits one of her donors just before they are about to donate. Unfortunately, they don't make it through the donation and pass away. She then sees a screen, on it is Ruth, we find out 10 years have passed, Ruth has donated twice, but they don't think she will survive a third and will complete her journey. Kathy visits Ruth, she's weak and frail, they are both happy to see each other. 
We find out Tommy has donated twice and is still going strong, unlike Ruth who doesn't think she will survive her third donation. As Ruth lies in bed, they share a moment and stories. Kathy takes Ruth and they head to find Tommy. Kathy runs to him as they embrace. He then goes to see Ruth. The trio go on one last trip together, to the beach, the same place they had heard of the stories. An abandoned boat on the sands. They sit on the sands and think back of their time at Hailsham, looking forward to their short futures. Kathy asks for forgiveness on keeping them both apart. She admits they loved each other, and she was jealous and didn't want to be left alone. She tries to get them a deferral. She gives them an address of who they need to apply to. To get the deferral, Tommy shows Kathy his art. She loves it. Tommy is surprised. As Tommy rests, Kathy reads to him as he lay in bed. It's here she finally kisses him before they lay in bed together. Kathy heads to the address Ruth gave her. She tells Tommy they hold hands as he draws some more, showing his scars. Kathy tells Ruth they are going to try and defer. Sadly, Ruth then passes away during her third donation. Her body is just left in the theater after she passes. Kathy and Tommy head to the address, here they meet Madam. She looks shocked. Inside her home, they tell her how they love each other and ask for a deferral. She apologizes. The former headmistress, Miss Emily, joins them, now old and in a wheelchair. She remembers them both. She tells them that Hailsham the reason for the art was to prove the children were people and that they deserve a chance to live a normal life. But mankind wasn't willing to accept it as people would rather have longer lives and not worry about the consequences of their actions. They realize deferral is a lie, and it doesn't exist. It never did. Heartbroken, they leave. Madam tells them that she wishes she could help them. That's all they ever wanted to do. On the drive home Tommy has a breakdown, like he did as a child back in Hailsham. Kathy embraces him. We are then back at the start of the movie. It's Ruth looking on as Tommy is going in for his third donation. Their eyes meet before the operation starts. Tommy never makes it and passes away. It's two weeks later, Kathy has lost her two closest friends. We find out it is now Kathy's turn, her first donation will be in less than one month's time. The movie ends as she looks onto a sunset, not knowing if her life was much different than those. She will donate for to save their lives. A sad ending to an alternate reality. If you enjoyed the recap of Never Let Me Go, then why not hit that like button to show your support and why not watch another video on screen now. Until our next recap, stay safe, take care and I'll see you soon my friends.